I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Hallelujah. Well, may the Lord bless Facebookers, everybody that's out there. Um, I was going into prayer. There's a word from the Lord. I want to be before you all briefly. I want to share a word. You know, I just want to be able to just talk to you to, today. Something that we must understand and know that the word of God is the thing that's going to keep us from this world of wickedness. The word of God is the only thing that's going to keep us from the world of wickedness. So before I begin in the word of the Lord, I just want to be able to go in prayer and ask those that are true believers of Jesus Christ. Pray my Lord, pray my strength in the Lord as I continue to go forth. Father, I thank you for this word that you have given me. And I pray that it richly bless every individual and collective of people that are watching this video. Let your word increase and take root of the heart and soul of every individual. Let your kingdom come and your will be done that you may get the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I want to begin to read in 1 Timothy, it's beginning and starting off in verse 12, chapter 4, verse 12. It said, Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity, till I come. Give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. And then in verse 15 on down, it said, Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. The scripture said, it shall save both thyself and them that hear thee. Now, when God will call you as an individual, the Bible says that Jesus was persecuted before we was persecuted. And so when you first make that choose, choose to make that decision to say, Lord, I surrender my life to you. I give my all, Lord, forgive me of my sins. And you falling after Christ. When you first fall, start falling after Christ, the enemy going to come immediately to try to withdraw you back to your old man. But when you have the power of the Holy Ghost and you begin to stand firm on what you believe in according to the word of God, that's when you, that's when you erupt the enemy territory and then it caused chaos. And the Bible said the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, but violence take it by force. When Jesus brought, Jesus didn't bring a religion. I want to make this plain. Jesus didn't bring a, 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 a religion, a form of a religion. But what he did bring was the kingdom of God. He said the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He told the people to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So when I go into 1 Timothy 4, you know, verses 12, and it started showing me how I should conduct my life as a young believer. Now, therefore, it said, let no man despise thy youth. Amen. Now, let me go to another passage because I want to go to the topic of my video, the video that the Lord leading me on. It said the cost of not being conformed to the world. Amen. The cost of not being conformed to the world. In Romans 12, verse 2, it says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. And as I continue to go on, I'm going to go into John, St. John, St. John chapter 7. I want to talk about Jesus Christ on the cost of not being conformed, on how he wasn't conformed to this world, and how we must... Take on that same avenues of Jesus Christ. And he's left, he left an example for us. Amen. So John chapter 7. Here it says in verse 7. This is what Jesus said. The world cannot hate you, but me it hated it. And it says, because I testify of it, that the works thereof are evil. Now the Son of God said, 
the world hated me. Not because I gave them fishes and loaves and healed the sick and raised the dead. He said, the world hated me first because I testify of it that the works thereof are evil. Now, when you begin to go against the grain of evil things, because see, when I was in sin, I was an evil person living a sinful life. That means I was hindering a lot of people that was of the world because I was living in sin. Now, the thing is, I'm not making myself like I'm perfect and I'm better than everybody. No. But when you know what is sin, when you know the country, everything that is not pleasing to God, that's when you must lay aside. If you're not aware of it, then you're not sure whether it's right or wrong. But once you come to the knowledge of the truth, the Bible said, if any man, after they have received the knowledge of the truth and they are still willfully sinning, the Bible said there will be no more remission of that sin. Therefore, the Bible speaks speaks plainly it says that they crucifying christ afresh that means is that it's as if you was the man that put him on the cross as i was the man that put him on the cross when i was in my past sins so the word of the lord says plainly in verse 7 and john 7 that the world cannot hate you but me it hated so when you live it in Christ, it's not about you. When you in Christ and you preach in Christ, then the people you're gonna be wanting, like, why did why why I don't have the same friends I used to have no more? Now that I got saved, now I don't sell drugs no more, smoke no more, do these things no more. Where are all the friends that I once had? Because that means you've been born again. That's why he said, be not conformed to the world. But now is there's a backwards that's going on. It's like the world more is more impacting than the church of God that is in Jesus Christ. It's see. Christ, it should be impacting the world, not the world impacting the believers. See, this is why we are seeing things that should not be. That, like, I had just got to do posting stuff on Facebook, and I'm sharing. I share this stuff to show that people got children that got to go to these schools, and you got transgenders, you got homosexuals, yeah, you got fornicators, you got all kinds of people, liars. But I, I, I'm, I'm speaking specifically on these transgenders. Now, what in the world is going on? Now, when you now, as a believer, when you are saved, you got to preach the gospel. Hallelujah. It said it's foolish to them that perish. So what I'm speaking now, it can be foolish to a lot of people that's hearing the word of the Lord. But when the gospel of Jesus Christ, because that's why the Bible said there are no, there are another Jesus. People are preaching another Jesus. They're preaching all this sweet cotton candy Jesus. When Jesus didn't die on that cross by feeding a uh, Five five thousand people. Jesus, that's the reason why he didn't die on that cross. And I'm finna prove it to you. In Luke chapter twenty three, verse in verse twelve. Matter of fact, I'm gonna begin in verse thirteen. Luke chapter twenty three, verse thirteen. It says, "And Pilate, when he had called together the chief priests." And the rulers and the people said unto them, Ye have brought this man unto me, which he was talking about, Jesus Christ. You have brought this man unto me as one that perverted the people. And behold, I, having examined him before you, have found no fault in this man, touching those things whereof you accuse him. Now, Pilate was speaking to these scribes and Pharisees, the people that say they believed. Though God's word. These Pharisees and scribes said they had Abraham to be their father. But Jesus turned around and said, your father is of the devil. You are from beneath. That's why he tried to tell Nicodemus when he came in the middle of the night. Nicodemus said, man, I know you're a man of God. You can't do these things if, if it wasn't of God. But long story short, Jesus said you must be born again. If a lot of people say there was homosexual born that way, well, I got good news for you. You can be born again. If you say you was born a fornicator, well, I got good news for you. You can be born again. If you say you was drinking all your life as the way you was rounded, listen, the Bible said we was born in sin, shaping iniquity. But the Bible said there's an opportunity to be born again. In verse 14, after, uh, in verse 15, it said, No, no yet, Herod, for I sent you to him, and lo, nothing worthy of death is done unto him. I will therefore chastise him and release him. And it says in verse 17, For of necessity he must release one unto them at the feast. And they cried out all at once, saying, Away with this man, and release unto us Barabbas. And then it said, Who for a certain 
sedition made in the city and for murder was cast into prison. Now, I'm going to go back in verse 18. It said, they cry out aloud and once saying, away with Jesus Christ and release unto us a murderer. Barabbas, the Bible, it, it made it plain that that's why he was in prison, because of murder. Now, they rather release a murderer into the world than a man that can give you life. I'm just sharing something that this is what God has been, been dealing with me with. And this is why it's so important for us to know the fullness of the gospel of Christ. There are really people out there seeking for the truth. I know there's a lot of kind of different teaching. People are, are preaching their feelings. People are preaching their opinions. But when I see, when I quote something from the word of God in truth and in love to tell you that this is what the Lord have already spoken. How would you tell me I'm judging you? How, how am I? You know, judgment is a good thing when you accept it in a good way. The Bible says that judge with righteous judgment. Amen. But in the world that we are living in now today, as I'm going to Isaiah chapter 5, it speaks of it this way in, in, verse 20, in verse 20. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the word of the Lord. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Amen. That means woe unto everyone that is wise in his own eyes but not taken on the counsels of the Lord. See, if you got a certain ingredient, a certain recipe that you're trying to cook at your house, you got to follow the proper instruction to make sure your meal come out just right. So if you want to follow the proper instruction, you got to make sure that you got to have the word of the Lord. You got to have the Holy. You can't come off in different other teachings. The Bible said, who have me with you? In other words, what, what, where are you getting your teaching from? Because the Bible said that men are going to depart from the faith. Taking on seducing spirits, doctrines of devils. Therefore, if we're looking in this world that we are living in, we need to be really let go of the world. Don't be conformed because it's going to cost you. It cost Jesus to die on that cross. Hallelujah. And that's why he paid that price for you and me. That's why he paid that price for my sin. Why you think that if I was so bold in the world and these sinners that are bold in the world, these wicked people that are bold in the world, these people doing parade homosexuality and they out there walking in the streets and they bold. They, they, nobody ain't saying nothing about that. Nobody ain't saying, hey, you, hey, what, what, what about my offenses? What about my rights? Hallelujah. Because I know the only thing that is right is God's word. You know, how you how you think that we are made? But now we have become so timid of preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have become so timid in the churches. We have become so silent that the enemy has shut our mouths when we should be speaking up against sin. Because if we don't speak out, the Bible said, cry loud and spare not. Show our people their transgression. But you know why they call it a hate message? Because see, now when somebody preaching the truth and the gospel is coming right towards your front door, people and say sweet off your own front porch. You know what? My four punch been swept off because God delivered me from my evil ways. And this is why I'm representing the Lord Jesus Christ. Where people say, well, the Lord is not that way. Well, tell me about Jesus Christ when he flipped over those tables in the synagogue and said, y'all made it a den of thieves when it should be the house of prayer. See, what's going on with the church? No, everybody's losing their fire, but some people are still keeping on and holding up that mandate of Jesus Christ. Because if we do be done away with the Bible and God's word, where would be the standard? Where would be the boundaries? Where would be the, 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 the statues to follow after? People say this Bible is men written, but what are you following? What are you reading upon? Because it's still men written if you're reading something. If you follow somebody's instructions, it's, it's men written or whatever it is. Why not follow something that will get your life right? Because you don't want to change it. That's why you're trying to justify the Bible as being written. Man, the Bible said it's an inspired written word of God. It hasn't just been written by man. It's inspired of God. Hallelujah. This is something that we should not be deceived by. Man, don't let Facebook fool you. All these people up here saying they saved. Man, you ain't saved. You need to be delivered, man. People need to get Jesus Christ in their life to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Man, don't be a hinder of another brother and a sister. This is the gospel truth. Man, the Bible said we're going to be eating, drinking, and being married. Giving it in marriage. But knew not until the flood came. 
as the days of Noah, so shall it be when the Son of Man returns. Look at what look at what's going on. If you man look look at on Facebook, you can see this stuff. I just got through posting a transgender man, a man, a man, y'all. Hear me. It's a man looking like a woman with a full beard. Singing in the children's room. And say, I don't care if you a boy or girl or whether you in between. Listen, come on now. That, yeah, that's, that's a sense of praying. But let me read, let me read something before I finish this, this video. In Jeremiah 6, let me see what Jesus talked about prayer. Because Jesus, oh, Jesus, the Bible said he angry at the wicked every day. Hallelujah. He angry at the wicked every day. Glory to God. Let the let your will be done, Lord. Jeremiah 6. Verse, hallelujah, verse 15, it said, were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? No. So when you see the parades out there, they was not ashamed. When you see all this wickedness, when you got, you know, gay clubs and homosexual churches, and then you're getting married in the churches, but, but, but I'm supposed to be quiet and pray about it. Why they, why they just up in the house of God and doing this stuff, and I don't say nothing. And I got the fire of the Holy Ghost. And the Bible said, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, for you are received, are you sealed until the day of redemption. Let me finish reading this scripture verse. It said, They were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. They ain't even blushed at their sin. They ain't even blushed at their abomination. I can understand a homosexual is crying to get out of their sins. I can understand a fornicator is crying to get out of their situation. But if, if it's the person that's knowing that they what they're doing is contrary to God. And they do not want to change. That, that's when you preach a gospel of you need to repent or else you're going to perish and go to hell. Because the Bible said in Romans 1, 28, they did not want to retain God in their knowledge. In other words, they knew the word. They knew God was not pleased at what they liked. But they didn't want to retain it. So it's going to take a man of God, somebody to come across your path and tell you the way you're going is not right because the word of the Lord says, and not what I said, the word of the Lord. If the word of the Lord says you can be a homosexual, I won't be preaching against it. But God forbid, because that is a sin unto death. Hallelujah. In verse 15, it says this, they shall fall among them that fall. At the time that I visit them, they shall be cast down, said the Lord. Verse 16 in Jeremiah 6. Thus said the Lord, stand ye in the ways, and see and ask for the old path. Where is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. And also I set watchmen over you, saying, hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not hearken. As I'm preaching to you right now, whoever have a listening ear, and those that are contrary to those that are rebellious, to those that want to justify their sins, I'm not even going to justify my sin. If I'm in sin, committing sin, and I know that it's not pleasing to God, I'm going to hit the ground, I'm going to hit my face on that floor, and that's God to get that thing out of me. Hallelujah. Because I'm not going to do anything to displease God. When I know and come to the acknowledgement of something that's not right in the sight of God, because the Bible said God is sorrow, working repentance. How sorry you are of your sins. Hallelujah. A chapter later, in verse, a chapter, uh, exact chapter later, Jeremiah 7, verse 16. A chapter later, hear what the Lord's response was. When, when, he, when they said they were not hearken and walked therein in the old path, this is what God said. Verse 16, chapter 7 of Jeremiah. Therefore, pray not thou for this people. No, neither lift up a cry nor prayer for them. Neither make intercession to me. For I will not hear thee. This is what thus said the Lord. Let me read this one more time. Verse 16. Therefore pray not thou for this people. Those the ones that said I will not hear again unto them. Those that are walking boldly in their sin when they know they're contrary to the word of God. He said neither lift up a cry nor prayer for them. Neither make intercession to me for I will not hear thee. Glory to God. See, this is so important. He said, I will not. So we could be praying in vain, trying to pay for wickedness. The Bible didn't say pray. The Bible said warn them. It didn't say pray for. It said warn the wicked. My God. Oh, Jesus. It said warn the wicked. That means you got to open up your mouth. You got to make mention. You got to let them know. Whether if it's collectively, publicly, secretly, by yourself. 
The gospel got to be preached. Hallelujah. Amen. And John 3, my God, this is so this is so valid for me because the Bible said hold fast until Jesus comes because there's going to be a lot of deception that's going to hit the fan. Everybody going to have their own belief. But see, they speak out of their opinion. But give me something in the word that's sound doctrine. Don't give me no smooth talk. Don't give me no... The Bible said in Isaiah 30, they said they're speaking smooth things and deceits. They said, say to us um, smooth things. Say to the seer, see not. Say, say to the speaker, don't, don't speak to us, uh, prophesy to us smooth things. Isaiah 30. My God. But you know what they say to the men of God and women of God that are really standing? You preaching a hate message. You don't have the love of Jesus in your life. And you wonder why Jesus Christ got crucified. You think Jesus Christ got crucified because he fed the 5,000? Man, if Jesus was standing feeding the 5,000, you think you think John the Baptist got his head chopped off for, for preaching love? No. He told Herod about himself. <laughs> Man, we got this mixed up. We got to really understand who is of the Lord and who's not. Hallelujah. This is so important. In John chapter 3, Verse 16, I'm going to start at the very popular verse. It said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. That's a wonderful scripture. But they stop there. But if you continue to go on down, it says, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world. Hallelujah. So in other words, he did not send his Son to condemn the world. Amen. And a lot of people say this is a condemned message. Nope, this is a message of love through warning to people to tell you, hey, this is not the right way. We got to stand. If we say we are believers, the Bible says, them that name the name of Christ, let them first depart from iniquity. Hallelujah. In verse 17, it said, For God sent out his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. It said, He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So you can believe Jesus Christ and a lot of other dogs. Other you can believe, I believe in Jesus. I believe he was a prophet. No, he was the Son of the living God. He wasn't just a prophet. He was the Christ, the Son of the living God who died on the cross. He wasn't just a prophet. He was beyond that. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus Christ. Verse 19, it says this, and this is the condemnation. Now, this is what condemned people. This is the condemnation that Jesus Christ was speaking of. That light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light because, because their deeds were evil. Their deeds were evil. Now, many people don't want to hear that scripture. Oh, uh, you taking that out of context. How am I taking it? How in the world I'm taking this out of context when it says plainly? Their deeds were evil. And watch this. Verse 20. For everyone that doeth evil hated the light. So when the person actually doing evil, they hate the light. Hallelujah. Let a, let a, let a, let a cockroach be in the middle of your house with lights off and you turn the light on. You know what that cockroach is going to do? It's going to hide under something because it's being exposed. That roach don't want to be seen. So it's only going to come out at night in the dark. That's what's wrong with people that are actually contrary to the word of God. They don't want their sins to be uncovered. Hallelujah. But God is going to do some uncovering. God is going to do some uncovering because it's time out for saying, you say, man, I don't care if you got a gift or call. You know what the scripture tells me? Gifts and callings is without repentance. That means I can I can sing to the top of my lung, have that, have that wonderful voice singing glory unto the Lord. But I'm not living a thing for the Lord. Because the Bible says you shall know them by the fruits that they bear. In other words, that they produce. Hallelujah. Verse, I, I'm not done yet. Glory to God. Verse 20 says, For everyone that do it even hated the light, neither coming to the light, lest his deed should be reproved. Unless somebody reprove that sin. Hey, brother, listen. You, you need your life. You need, you need to be saved. The Lord loves you. But, man, if you continue in your sinful living, man, you're going to die without Jesus Christ. So let me ask you this. Is that hate or is that love? Because a brother came to me when I had marijuana in my pocket. And I'm selling marijuana. And so here I am, old wretched sinner I once was. And the Lord 
spoke to me through the brother in the Lord. Told me, man, all you need is Jesus. I said, bro, that's real. Hallelujah. But I was like, if I had what you had, I'd do what you'd be doing. But I was missing something. And that I was missing was the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ. I didn't have his spirit. The Holy Ghost come in fire. The Bible said you can be filled with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Hallelujah. I know the Lord been dealing with me about the Hebrew boys. Why they didn't get burned up? Why they didn't get burned up in the fire? It's because they was on fire for the Lord. Hallelujah. They was on fire. That's why they couldn't. That's why the other men that threw the men got consumed by the fire that threw them. That they threw the Hebrew boys in. Because the Hebrew boys had a fire that was greater than the fire they were thrown in. So no matter what situation I may go through, no matter what situation you may go through, when you keep the fire of Jesus Christ, I don't care how tough the storm may be, the fire of the Holy Ghost was the Son of God. Because the Bible said they saw four men in the fire. And it looked like the Son of God. That fire was Christ. Don't let the devil take your fire because the devil sure ain't going to take mine. I'm going to love people. Hey, Amen. But praise God. The Bible said they're going to find themselves fighting against God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Man, John the Baptist was by himself and his head was chopped off. For the gospel's sake. You know, it's going to be tough for the saints. In the times we are in. The Bible said these things are going to come to pass. But think it's not strange when you fall in divers trials. Hey Amen. We got to hear the word of the Lord. We got to be in prayer. We got to see God with all our hearts. You know, I'm not just giving the word just because I want to. Is the Lord just been dealing with me and I wanted to be obedient. And I just thank God for his word because just the word that I spoke, it was for me too. And I just pray that, man, somebody is under the sound of my voice have hearkened unto the word of the Lord after they watch this video. Because God's word is for everyone on this earth. God's word is for all, even for the homosexuals. God's word is for them. God is still showing mercy to them. For the fornicators, for the adulterers. God is showing mercy right now. Because the Bible said his head is not shortened that he cannot save. For everyone that's listening to what I'm sharing, God's hand is not shortened that he cannot save. You just got to recognize and acknowledge your sins before him. And God will heal you and save you and fill you with his precious Holy Spirit. And then he will lead you to someone that have the proper teaching of the word of the Lord. To show you how you should live this life according. To his word. Amen. I pray that the Lord be the blessings and hearers of his holy word. That God will bless you continuously. In Jesus Christ's name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.